23 is going to be that kind of skinny. Right. But Bonds, the, 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 the amount of growth with him was so pronounced. Yeah, that's just, it, I, you don't put on – you don't go from age 23 to age 40 and put on 50 pounds of muscle. It doesn't yeah. happen. And McGuire was a bigger guy, so it didn't look as bad. No, because uh, he yeah. had he had even when he was a rookie, he yeah, yeah. his forearms were massive. Yeah, his forearms like, were the size of most people's legs. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know, and and you know, and that was before any of that stuff. Because so, even Canseco was so, a big guy when he came right. up, but he so, just got bigger. So what's going to happen? Do you think the Yankees going to pay the six million dollars? There was a nice article I, in yesterday's Daily News about the Players Association talking about. Uh, when this contract first came up, what type of contract? The Players Association was very worried that this was going to set a precedent that the Yankees, if they didn't want to pay him, didn't have to, like you know, we talked about last week. Um, what I personally think is going to happen, and I mentioned last week, I'll mention it again, I think either they're going to come to an agreement that the money is donated somewhere or the Yankees are going to have to pay him. Uh, and whether he takes it. Now, if I'm A-Rod, I'm, I'm donating it to the Steinbrenner Foundation. And make himself look better, uh, but that's what I would do. It's, it's one of those two. I, I mean, I, 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 again, I said this last week. I, I disagree. I mean, I, I think because the language of the contract says that it's the sole discretion of the New York Yankees. Yeah, I don't think this money is ever going to be paid, and I think a court would uphold that because because of like this is not a performance contract. This I is know. not. But then the players association gets involved, and then it, becomes this whole fight. They can they can end they, it, but they can do that after the season. It's, I know it's not like it has. Well, to happen Well, I don't think it's going to happen. This I think I think I agree. It's going to happen after the season. I think they're going to sit down. They're going to say we don't need the lawyer fighting. We don't need any of this crap. Let's yeah, donate the money. That means the Yankees are technically taking the money from Rodriguez and giving it to the foundation. Both, all three, get their little publicity. And I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and I agree with what you're saying. I mean, I, 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 I then certainly, the I certainly association comes in, and then, then, they, then Major League Baseball gets involved, and then it's all about the contracts, and then people start looking at right. their contracts. Well, and now then, that's that that part of it won't happen because, like I said, this is a marketing contract. This is not a baseball contract. I know that, but the thing about the it's like um, it goes to free agency. How do you think free agency happened? You no, know, it, it doesn't. It, it, it's it doesn't. a similar Please type of thing. Believe me, it doesn't. Well, it does. No, because, see, we're starting an argument here that really doesn't need to happen. Well, I'm just saying. This is a marketing contract. This was based on the Yankees thinking that they could make money as A-Rod chased these all-time great players on the home run list. And, and, like, and like I said last week, him being the clean bastion of goodness that Barry Bonds wasn't. Right. So – that's what the Yankees saw that as a, as a marketing tool. So they signed this separate contract, this this separate bonus st- um, step ladder contract with a Rod, saying that all right, this if 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 you hit these milestones, we will pay you bonuses. Right. But as I said, the language of the contract says that it's at the sole discretion of the New York Yankees as to whether or not this is marketable. And obviously, this is no longer marketable because A Rod has since he signed that contract. A Rod has said twice that he took performance I, enhancing I, I drugs. I would think that Steiner Sports would think differently. I'm sure if he, then, Steiner then, Sports then, had the rights to it, they'd be more. Then you, you, you know you, what? Then let A Rod. Then let A Rod make his own deal with Steiner. Well, they, they made it with the Steiner, Yankees. But Steiner, Steiner probably wouldn't do it because Steiner works so closely with the Yankees. Well, that's something else. That's he's something not. Else. He's not going to. He's not going to jeopardize that relationship. I'm just saying. But my 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 point is this. In terms of what should happen, I agree with you. And and let's, Thank you. let's not – see how friendly and nice I'm being, and I'm not being angry. Um, but let's look at it in the sense that A-Rod – well, let's, let's not go back to last year is basically what I'm saying. When everything was about acrimony, A-Rod was firing off right, lawsuits right. As, 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 as quick as his lawyers could type them up. He was suing the Yankees. He was suing Major League Baseball. He was suing the Players Association. He was suing everybody. I know. Why revisit that? That's why. Over, and I hate to say it, what's basically a paltry amount of money. For him, yeah. $6 million for Alex Rodriguez, considering that he's on his second 207, well, he's 275 now, 252 previously. Yep. The man is probably going to make in his baseball lifetime somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 million. Yep. All right? So $6 million in perspective, isn't really a large sum of money for him. No, it's not. So why get all crazy, especially when the fans are embracing him again? You know, he's, he's doing everything right now. 
for the first time in his career, he's saying the right things. He's being humble. He's not being like the, the like, hey, let's focus the spotlight on me guy. He's not saying stupid stuff like he always seems to. Well, let's, let's talk about something else here. This marketing contract, which the Yankees are not following up on now, is this something that for other players, um, maybe they'll, the Players Association won't allow these type of contracts anymore? That's a possibility. Either that or they would, they would revisit the language why, and, and not have it be at the sole discretion. I mean, that, right. that was, I, I hate to say it, but that was a great stroke of genius by the Yankee lawyers, whoever wrote this contract up, to say, all right, we're going to be the ones who decide if this gets paid. And it... it I, 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 like I said, I think I don't think the contract is is ever going to be enforced, and I don't think it's enforceable. But now it's 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 up to the Yankees, and it's it's not marketable. It, it, it oh, is no, it's not. So but... nobody can nobody can expect the Yankees to make the six million dollars they would pay to A Rod. You can't make that back because how are you going to make it back? Well, six million dollars, no guarant- a lot of money. No, yeah, but there's no guarantee that they were going to make it anyway. Those shirts could have not been sold anyway, even if they, um, you know, even if he was clean. Let's, right, you know, but there's no guarantee people are going to buy the shirts. There's no guarantee, but you certainly would have a much larger audience to to purchase those shirts. As well, that would want to purchase it, right? They, they you want you to have, be a part of it. You you have you you certainly have the possibility of doing it. Right now, there's no possibility. No. If they pay him six million dollars, they're they're going to lose five point nine. Let's uh, let's take a break. We're going to talk with J.P. Pelsman of uh, the Bergen Record Jets beat writer. Uh, my name is Rob Leonard. That is Tim Leonard. This is from the Press Box on WHPC. Tune in to Thunder Road for... The heart-stopping, fans-dropping, hard-rocking, earth-shocking, booty-shaking, love-making, fire-aqua-taking, history-making, legendary... Join me, Kim Tracy, for the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on Thunder Road, Thursdays at 11 p.m. and Sundays at 1 p.m. on 90.3 WHPC. And streaming. The Career Development Service Area of the Department of Student Personnel Services is pleased to provide you with a copy of the 2014 to 2015 edition of our Career Guide. The guide is the result of a collaborative effort involving the Career Counseling Center, the Job Placement Office, and the Transfer Office. It is designed to acquaint students with our services, provide them with useful information about career planning process, and assist them in making a successful transition to their next academic institution or the world of work. If you need more info, call the Career Counseling Center at 572-7696. This message was brought to you by WHPC 90.3 FM, the radio voice of Nassau Community College. WHPC 90.3, the voice of Nassau Community College, is looking for individuals, businesses, charities, or organizations in our local global community that would like to donate to support our radio station. Whether you listen locally or online, here's how it works. Go to our webpage at ncc.edu slash whpc and click Donate Now. On the upper left-hand corner of our webpage, click Make a Gift. There, you will see pull-down menus and complete instructions for donating to WHPC. Any dollar donation you can give will help defray our operating costs. If you have already donated, thank you. It's greatly appreciated. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College, WHPC, streaming online at ncc.edu slash whpc. We're back here on From the Press Box. Was it 1982 or 1983? Naked Eyes, always something there to remind me. It was 83 or 84. It wasn't 84. It's 83, I think. We'll find out in a second. Anyway, uh, this is from the Press Box every Monday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., Talking Sports. I'm Rob Leonard. Who are you, Tim? I'm Tim Leonard. Stone. And if they want to find you on Twitter, because every single day you're putting something of interest and entertaining on Twitter, what is the Twitter address? At Real Tim Leonard. I also tweet a lot about Scandal, by the way. Wow. Fun- phenomenal TV show. And on the phone with us is the Jets beat writer for the Bergen Record. Re- reigning champion, returning champion to, to From the Press Box, J.P. Pelsman. J.P., welcome back to From the Press Box. Thanks, Rob. Well, you know, I've got a little problem with uh, Tim right now. <laughs> Who doesn't? Well, I mean... Uh, what do I do now? I found out uh, over the weekend I was doing some research into the uh, NCAA men's lacrosse tournament. Did you know, Rob, that the uh, the athletic director at Towson University is Tim Leonard? Oh, I knew that. Oh, yeah, because I do, I do Google searches on Tim to see... Um, 
look up stuff on him, and I always find the Towson guy. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Well, that's one of our rivals at Hofstra. I mean, come on. I know. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he went to the enemy. But uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's also a judge in Oklahoma or Nebraska, the one of those two. Judge. The, well, now the, I see why you are real, Tim Leonard, because he's like T-U-A-D or something like that's that. That's what so. I'm saying, yeah. And, and we so should say that to, uh, that, yourself. that you and um, Timmy and Shutta and Matura, the, the Hofstra murderer's row. Uh, I used to call us the Hofstra All mafia. came out of Hofstra. And don't forget Caldera. Caldera, sure. Yeah, Covered we, the Yankees first at the record. That's right. So uh, all that, that power coming out of the Hofstra Chronicle. Yes, just, just incredible. Back to the old days when you know, let's, we got to get the paper out, damn it. Yep. <laughs> anyway, how are we doing there, JP? Not bad, not bad. Uh, uh, witnessed uh, the first two days of rookie camp at, uh, at the Jets, and it was kind of interesting. How, 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 last week the Jets uh, had their draft. Uh, should Jet fans be happy? Let's start there. I guess so. I mean, again, you know, as much as everyone's praising him, let's face it, we all know you can't you can't really judge a draft till two, three, four years down the road. But yeah, it looks like it looks like they made some solid picks. But obviously, uh, you know, we have to see how it shakes out. But yeah, I mean, on on the face of it, sure. I mean, this and also I think what's more important, guys, is they have a, a GM now who who seems to know what he's doing. He's not some you know some idiot talking about the weather and stuff like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, it's it just seems to me that that McCagnan, as much as anything, he just went by the book, and and it, it like a lot of a lot of Best jets, player available, yeah, yeah, a lot of Jet GMs in the past have have kind of I think wanted to just maybe show that they're smarter than everybody else, which is never the way to go in the NFL, uh, and and that led to you know whatever different draft disasters that happened or free agent disasters, but. You don't you don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel in the NFL. You know, no. pick the best guy available, right. and and you know, obviously having uh, Leonard Williams drop into their laps at number six. Hey, fine, we don't necessarily need him, but he's the he was the best rated player in the draft. Oh, hey, let's yeah. take him. Yeah, yeah, let's no, let's add that guy. It's pretty amazing that, they, that he fell to them. Uh, and like you said, I mean, you, you they fall. You know, he falls in your lap. You might as well take him. You know, and and I don't know what that means for uh, for for Wilkerson because I know that they were talking about that they wanted to get him signed and and that was a priority for the off season. But th- does that change now? Have they addressed that at all? No, they really haven't. I mean, he, he, McCagnan still says they want to sit down now, and uh, well, the draft is over, Mike. So when when are you going to sit down? And, yeah, now's yeah, the he time. kept saying when the draft is over. Well, I haven't seen it yet. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, that that is just again as good as Williams should be. As good as everyone says he should be, I mean, Will Wilkerson right now is a sure thing. We know who he is. Right. You know, we still don't know who Leonard Williams is. We assume he's going to be great because usually the guys don't whiff that badly. You know what I mean? If everyone's saying he's the number one prospect in the draft, they're usually not that bad. But we'll see. But it's an interesting point, Tim, because certainly they have, unless Todd Bowles throws a lot more 4 3 looks than he usually does. Uh, they've got a surplus, and that's assuming, obviously, though, that's assuming that Mo comes back in the fold and doesn't. I don't think it'll hold out because then you're, you're costing yourself real money, but still, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, uh, you know, when, when Woody is saying we need to get it done and, and McCagn is saying we need to get it done, I, you know, I don't know that that urgency now exists, and, and obviously this wasn't the plan because it wasn't, it wasn't like they were expecting Williams to be available at number six. I mean, I, I have to assume they were either going to go wide receiver or, or you know, somebody, I don't know, somebody on the defense. But Yeah, even, even McCagney admitted they were surprised. Oh, I'm sure he was. <laughs> you know, he even at least admitted that. At least he was nice enough to admit that. And he basically, it's funny, the interesting thing he said was, guys, is that uh, I guess we should have assumed this, that teams themselves do mock drafts to try to figure out who's going to take what. And I'm sure that wasn't their mock draft that nobody had taken in by number six. D- does this change the plans of the Jets, this, uh, of this, this great first-round draft pick the Jets got? Well, you know, I just don't see, you know, Todd Bowles is a 3-4 guy. I just don't see how many, you know, to get everyone on the field, you're going to have to do a lot of 4-3. Although I'll tell you what else, it's not getting as much pub, but uh, I think uh, the guy they drafted in the seventh round, they drafted a, a nose tackle. Deion Simon, an, F, an FCS guy from Northwestern State, Louisiana, and you know what? He could be, he could be the heir apparent to uh, Snacks Harrison. So, Snacks Harrison will be a, a unrestricted free agent next year. So maybe he's on the way out. But again, we'll see how this Wilkerson thing shakes out in the next few months. I, like I said, I would get a deal done with him. I don't think players like him come along every day. 
Yeah, that's what I, w- I was saying that to people because there there were some rumors going around that Wilkerson was going to be. 